Okay, what about the empty blanks? You knew ACEWARE doesn't leave any space unturned. Well, that's done in preferences. And these two fields happen to be turned off in my preferences on the course screen or on the registration screen. But those are date fields, which would be course must be completed by, which is typically used for independent study or maybe an online class. And then a actual course completion date uh, that you can track. Uh, again, generally that's used in online programs. I'm going to go ahead and roll to uh, the student manager preferences screen. Again, uh, either edit preferences or the preferences tag on the name screen takes you to preferences. We want to go to register. And again, here you see where you can turn fields on and off. Um, you can relabel, repurpose some of these fields. Uh, there is a registrar mode, which allows you to reduce the number of fields that are on the screen for uh, registration staff. Uh, system behavior preferences. Um, use uh, this new feature, bill pay, reg type. Uh, again, these are uh, options if you, again, are new to the system and haven't reviewed this, even if you're a long-time user. Go back and relook at this, because in the last year we've added more options, we've added more things you can do with the system, uh, and it's always good to double-check preferences, especially now, like 7.2a is out, to make sure that you are taking advantage of all the latest and the greatest items. Moving on, <clears throat> grade CEUs hours. Again, uh, we've talked about that. These, these numbers, grades, or CEUs hours and credits, if it's turned on, come from the course screen uh, where you've set it up in the course. Uh, and But they can be edited at the registration level so that if you've got um, someone who doesn't complete all of the class, you can uh, edit those numbers to reflect that appropriately. While we're talking about editing the CEUs and the hours and the, and the grade, let me remind you that when you're in a class, and I'm going to get out of here and get back to a class. Well, if, if you have edit ability for registrations, uh, you can go to a class click on student list, and actually have the ability to edit. I have, I have edit ability on registration. So I can edit CEUs, registration code, MISC, credits, grade, and hours. So I can go in and say, well, uh, Barack and Willard really didn't attend all of this because they've been prepping for those debates. So they're only going to get 0.8 CEUs. And again, they only get two credits, and they're getting C minuses because of attendance. And again, hours, they only attended eight hours. You can actually edit those hours right here on the uh, C minus, I play fair here, 2.0, and eight hours. So you can edit those without having to go to the individual registration record and doing the edit, which is, of course, always on the table. Uh, when I close this screen, if you'll kind of watch the upper right-hand corner, it'll say, two records updated. Uh, and that's a quick way to do CEUs, hours, and grades editing. All right, next, uh, these one key wonders. Uh, when you're in the registration screen, and a student says, well, can you tell me about the description for this course, you did catalog. If you need to go to the name record and do any data changing, uh, the, the student says, oh, by the way, I have a new phone number, or my email has changed. Uh, can you edit that? You've got one click to take you there. And then the roster, which is show who else is in the class, um, is um, always available. Oh, see also, before we leave, leave that, <clears throat> the C also is the reference for uh, in catalog system, you can indicate related courses so that you can cross-sell. Uh, you, can, you can, as a program manager, define in the course classes that are similar to this one, and when you're doing a registration, 
uh, get to see also and say, by the way, Mr. Clinton, we also have a credit card management in Student Manager. Would you like to take that also? So you can, again, try to sell more, uh, more soup when they're walking into the store. All right, who approved this registration? This is new in the last year or so. Uh, but the idea is that this allows you to link to another name in the names table and be able to track like an approving supervisor. Um, so again, uh, a way to help track information about your registration. And you'll note this is on under the, uh, the additional info, uh, the additional info tab on the uh, registration screen. All right, keep them going. A uh, new item again, the add time, uh, that we've had an add time for a name record, but we've never done one on the register, but well, this is new in 7.2. So um, why do you group registrations? Um, again, um, you can have one person enrolling in several courses and wants to make a single payment. Now again, it could be cash check, then they have to be credit card, but the point is one person registering in several courses. The other one, uh, several people from a company. Uh, we talked about that's one of the benefits of if you went in from course and did add edit registration, uh, you can automatically group multiple employees uh, into one group for payment purposes. And again, uh, the company wouldn't have to pay for it. They could bill all these uh, seven registrations, although we've talked about if you're doing billings, you really don't need to group grouping. Uh, so the company paying for it with a check or paying for it with a credit card, um, that would be a way to do that. And then uh, you might have a group where a third party is registering people. Uh, two or more children from the same family, um, or a husband and a spouse, or the brother-in-law. You've you got the brother-in-law working on get a job so he moves out of your house. Um, you basically can multiply. Can, can bring multiple individuals that aren't necessarily related in any way uh, together and make a payment for them. So, uh, and as we as we mentioned, if you're using company invoicing, um, you don't really need to group registrations. How grouping works? Um, I, again, I'm going to um, get into the actual make sure. Um, that we will do an example of this uh, from the system. So <clears throat> I'm going to stay with student manager, and I'm not going to stay with student manager. I'll go somewhere who we don't have so many people in here. One of the other things that we'll note is that if you go in through the course screen, uh, whether the class is active or not, uh, it will let you add registrations from the course screen. So again, I'm going to uncheck active, hit save, hit add edit registrations, and I'm going to start adding people to this class. So I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to go to uh, Mr. Romney here, our buddy. And again, it, there's a warning now, even though the course is not active, it does warn you. Do you want to add? Yes, I want to do that. So I've added one person in this class. Now I'm going to add another person in this class, and you'll note, even though I'm in the green screen, because I came into this from Add Edit Registrations, or Add Edit Regis, hitting the Add button now takes me to a name lookup because I'm bringing a name to this class. So I'm going to add Mr. Obama, uh, special needs note. It asks me again, is it active? Yes, I do. And now here's the grouping question. You are adding a new registration for Barack. You want to group it? Yes, we do. So now, as we do that, um, the new screen shows up, a new part of the registration screen, which shows the groups. Uh, how much is this group that I'm building? What is the shopping cart that I'm creating? And at the top, it tells me uh, the number of people in my group. Now, I can go on, if I wanted to go back and actually get George W. to this, I'll just keep on going, B-U-S-H course not active, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, now I've got three. I've got the three amigos here. Barack, Willard, and George. W. <clears throat> now, the beauty of it is that when you make a group, you now can make one payment and cover the payment for the entire group at one time. Uh, so again, if this is the presidential 
uh, debate commission that's going to pay for this. Uh, we're going to say, all right, they're paying for this with a credit card. And of course, uh, at this point, the payment gateway would be live and you'd go to the payment gateway. Now note, when you're doing a group, the default name for the payer is the last person in the group that you add. You said, so if the first person is really picking up the tab, uh, if that was going to be Mint, was going to just pull in his pocket and grab out nine, 900 bucks to pay for this, you should have added Mint as the last person in the list. Now, because of the tools that we've got, <clears throat> find firm, find name, it's real easy for you to go in, look up a name, the Presidential Commission. Well, I don't have that in there. So I'm going to hit Escape and go back. And I'm going to look up Mr. Romney again, Governor Romney. I pull up his name, and I pop in his, his address or the address of his bank account. But the point is, you can reference the name. You can reference the firm. You can actually type in a brand new name, presidential uh, debate, and whatever address you want, <clears throat> and be able to put that into the payer name. Uh, final comment about the payment situation is that there is an additional notes area. Uh, you've got a pay note on the main screen. You have an alternate validated uh, or an option to validate option for additional info related to uh, a payment. And you have additional notes, a big pay notes field. These two here, transaction ID, ACE Web session ID, of course, relate to transactions via ACE Web. If you have ACE Web and people are enrolling online, <clears throat> ACE Web writes a serial number to these to help you track those down with your payment gateway as you're moving through. 